Hello, my name is Chris, and I'm going to be uh, your video tutorial. Um, and in this tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to configure our uh, PLC to communicate with our sign. Uh, we're going to do some basic configuration here. So uh, what we've got is I've got the manual here. And typically inside, internally in the sign, we have this Anybus HMS communicator. And um, it's going to be uh, connected through an Ethernet IP Cat5 cable, which is then going to exchange the RS-232 uh, to our EDV uh, 111 series LED signs. Um, and if you uh, haven't already, you can change the IP address or you can use the default IP address that we have already in the CFG file uh, right now. So let's go over to our camera view. And basically what we have here is we've got a Compact Logix L32E uh, PLC and uh, I have the uh, communicator device exposed just for video clarity and uh, we've got the two Cat5 cables connected to a switch and um, these two guys are on the same subnet so we've got 192.168.1.10 uh, on the PLC and then dot .11 on the Anybus communicator so then over here on the PC side um, I have a dot 51 so we can go ahead at this point and uh, bring up DOS once again just to verify that uh, we have the commu communication to our PLC and as well as our uh, Anybus communicator which I'm going to use up arrow and then change it to dot 11 and we're talking to our Anybus communicator at this point so what we want to do next is we basically want to configure um, our PLC project to communicate with uh, our, our Anybus. So I'm going to go ahead and start RS Logix 5000 software. And in this case, um, we're going to be using version um, 1617 just because uh, it's a lower version and uh, we can I can ensure that there's compatibility in this case is what we're demonstrating. I know that uh, I believe version 20 is out right now. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pick um, our particular PLC which is a L32E and we're going to use version 17 and in this case I'm going to call this uh, I'm going to start a new project and I'm just going to call it uh, project or I could call it my project let's say and I'm going to browse and I'm going to go ahead and put it on the desktop is where I'm going to put that okay now let's go back over to the camera view and what you'll notice is that my PLC is actually on um, and my communicator, I have some status lights here. And right now, um, I've got some blinking lights on the top, and uh, which means that uh, we are not basically communicating between the PLC and the Anybus communicator yet. So um, in order to, to basically fix that, uh, what we're going to do is um, we're going to configure what's called a generic Ethernet module between the PLC and the Anybus communicator. So um, right now, I don't have any I.O. Uh, on my particular uh, compact logic. It's just a processor only. But here off of the Ethernet uh, port, I want to basically configure a new generic module. So I'm going to click on New Module, and then go to Communications, and then Browse down until I find the in generic Ethernet module here. Okay. So uh, once uh, I get that, um, this is where I would put in the appropriate information to uh, talk to the Anybus communicator. Now in this case I'm going to go ahead and give it a name which is LED sign. Now this is an important name because these are going to be the names that are going to show up in the controller tags over here under your tag browser. Okay, And um, you can put a descriptor in here if you like. Um, you could put in there you know LED sign um, and maybe you have multiple signs but you could put you know sign 01 or you could just put LED sign or whatever you want. Um, as far as COM format, now this is very important. What we want to select here is data uh, single integer registers. Okay, um, and that's basically the COM format that we have configured when we downloaded that CFG file earlier. And then the other thing that's important is to go ahead and put the IP address of the actual communicator device. And in this case, it's one one nine two one six eight dot one dot eleven. And our input and output information is just uh, 100. And we're going to be exchanging uh, 32 bytes of input. And then our assembly instance 150. And we're actually going to be exchanging the full 496 bytes output uh, with one, one uh, assembly instance. But we're not actually going to send any, uh, any bytes that way. So uh, we'll go ahead and click OK in this case. And we can uh, set up an RPI if we like. 
Uh, we could slow this down. Um, actually, 10 is probably overkill. Uh, but we'll go ahead and leave that at, uh, at 10 and just say OK in this case. OK. So then now um, uh, what we're going to be doing next is we're going to go ahead and just download this project as a blank project because uh, really we don't have any uh, ladder logic. I'll go ahead and delete that uh, empty rung there. And then uh, I'll go ahead and uh, configure RS links. Now in this case um, I have links running already and I configured an Ethernet IP driver and I can see both of my devices. Um, and since I don't have an EDS file installed in RS Links, uh, the Anybus communicator just shows up as a question mark, which uh, doesn't really hurt in this case. But I am communicating through uh, Lynx Classic, so it's running. Uh, so now really all I need to do is just select the appropriate path. And in this case, I'll go ahead and select that path right there. And then um, now at this point, once the path is uh, determined, I can go ahead and do a, uh, a download in this case here. So I can, uh, I can go to communications and download to the PLC. And I'll go ahead and down my, my project. And then at this point, uh, we can uh, basically confirm that our Anybus communicator device is uh, starting to communicate uh, with our PLC. So let's go over to the camera view now. And there's a couple of things to confirm here. One is, is that we don't have a blinking I.O. light on the PLC. This means that if it's blinking, that means that we've done something in, inappropriate or, or something's wrong. And then also, let's confirm that we have uh, steady lights across the two top parts of the Anybus communicator, as well as we have some activity lights on our uh, network display here, or on um, our network switch, excuse me. And then uh, now we can go to the controller tags and we'll be able to see uh, basically all of our, our information here. We've got our, our LED sign inputs and LED sign outputs uh, that are mapped back and forth between the PLC. Now at this point, what all we've done is we have basically configured our PLC to communicate Ethernet IP to the Anybus communicator. So we haven't really done anything as far as the project uh, portion. Uh, but we'll go ahead and uh, save off this video here, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll continue on in the next video series. So this is Chris again. Thank you for uh, watching this part, and uh, pick up uh, part two here in just a, in a few minutes.